Good morning, family, friends, fellow church members of our late brother, Rudel Alonzo Shinnery. We're going to begin the tribute section of this worship service today. I'm going to ask at this time, if you have your cell phones, if you can either put them and vibrate or if you can turn them off so that as we go through the service, uh, it would not be a disturbance. So I'll ask you to do that at this time. I'm going to open the floor to anyone who would like to offer a few words to the family. Um, I would ask that no more than three or four people come up in the essence of time. And you have about three minutes each to offer any words of comfort or if you want to sing a song or anything, you can do so at this time. I welcome you on behalf of the members of the board the boards at the church, our different ministries, and our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Courtright Jarvis. I am Sister Deborah Henneman Smith, the one of the acolytes here at the church, and also a family member of Charlene. So greetings, welcome, one and all, to this going home celebration of our dear brother, Shinnery. So I open the floor now if there's anyone who would like to come up and give any greetings or any words to the family, you can do so now. Good morning, everyone. My name is Larry Hodge. I live in Scott Free Estate across from Riddell. It appears as if our lives, except for 20 years of military service, <clears throat> whether it was working at the Housing Authority, trying to buy a home or build a home, and in those days, it was a tutu house. And we were some of the few students who they were called in, the, in those days the C students and the D students because we love trades. And if you love a trade in those days, you were considered not a brilliant kid. So <clears throat> I went into carpentry. Rudy went into elect electronics and we stuck with our trades throughout our entire lives. As it pertains to church, in those days also, <laughs> the Moravian church was my family church. And after my sister and brother were baptized here, they told my mother, don't bring them all those guys here. So we went to Lutheran. But it didn't stop the system of being together. All the guys, we had to go to both churches. You had to go here and there every Sunday. So this church would have the services at 2 in the afternoon, or the Sunday school, I should say. <laughs> and we would have it at 9 in the morning, where I blew And as life went by, we end up where Rudy couldn't get away from me, and I couldn't get away from him. So up to his very last days on this earth, <clears throat> always jovial, always happy. I want to thank the Lord for bringing him to us, for allowing us to be friends all of our entire lives. So I had to come and say, and give him a tribute, 
and I met his beautiful wife, and we have never passed each other. It's always like, I'm there for you, and you're there for us. And God bless you all. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Edith Ramsey Johnson. I was fortunate to have Rudy in my wedding party because he and my husband was, were assigned at Langley Air Force Base, and that is where I was married. And Rudy and Mildred stepped up to the plate. My husband umpired, and so he was very involved. I just want to offer my condolences and thank you to Rudy and his family for what they had done for me back in 1975, and we remain friends since then. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Valdemar Hill, Jr., and uh, Rudel was my brother-in-law for over 60 years. Uh, very nice guy. He was always jovial, always had something nice to say, and uh, I really appreciated him very much. And so on behalf of my wife, Jennifer, and the rest of the family, I offer my condolences to the family. And uh, God bless all of you. Thank you. is still open to anyone else who would like to come up and give a word. We still have some time. Good morning. I want to thank the family of Mr. Shinnery. I know him for many years, and I'm going to miss him because I always ask my, his wife for him all the time. So I just want to sing one song, and I don't have no book with me, so I'm going it from, from the air, right? Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I fear it all. Because I know. the future and life. 
life is worth a living just because he lives. Amen. Thank you so much. I, I, I'd like to offer a few words to the family on behalf of my family, um, Doris Henman. I went to a birthday celebration on Saturday of another family member on my mother's father's side who made 95. And the word that was given at that <clears throat> celebration was family. How important family is. And as I was sitting and speaking to Charlene's nephew, we talked about the fact that after a certain generation, family seemed to disconnect. And the younger generation don't know each other the way the older generation knows each other. So Austin, Charlene, and I, we know each other very well. But do our children know each other? I would say not, you know? So it is important for us, because today I'm first meeting Charlene's nephew, <laughs> I mean her son, you know? And so it is so important that as we move from one generation to the next generation, that we keep the connection going. Because the importance that we had as family members for us, it's even more important for the next generation to know each other and to have that bond of family. And so whether it is reunions need to continue to happen so that those of the generations who don't know each other can get to know each other, or you, we just have a celebration for no cause at all just so that we can come together and fellowship with one another because I think it is so important. One of the points that was made, and I know it happened to my son, we live in a small island, you know, and everybody is like, when they say six degrees of separation, and we've had times where our children would have met someone that would have been a family member, would have fallen in love or falling in like with that person, only to find out that your family leave that one alone. You know, it has happened to my son and the young lady um, that liked him very much. Thank God she knew enough to point out my son to her mom and come to find out they were second cousins because his mom and I were first cousins. So when she found out that my son was her cousin, she was like so upset, no mommy, no mommy, no mommy, no, this can't be my cousin. But it's only because the generations are losing that connection. So it is so important that we keep the connection going, that we keep sharing the love, we keep building upon our history, our generational history, so that those who come after us will have that true sense of family and keep that connection. So I, I love my family, I know them, and I hope to get to meet the generation down and build that connection with you as well. Thank you. If there's anybody else that would like to offer a few words, you may come.
morning, ladies and gentlemen. We have come this morning to view the family of the late Rudel Olanza Shinnery Senior. As I say the final goodbyes, and because of this, the family would like to say thank you. Rudel had a great love for everyone whom he came into contact with, but most of all, he had greatest love for his family, and because of that, he'd be greatly missed. The celebration of Rudel's life will begin at 10 a.m. In turn, it will follow immediately after at the Eastern Cemetery Veteran Scripts. At this time, anyone who'd like to take the final vein may do so before the casket is closed. Thank you. Today, I'd also like to ask everyone to please check your cell phones. Please check your cell phones. Make sure they're in the silent and vibrate mode or turn them off as you don't want the service to be disturbed. Thank you for your cooperation. At this time, I'd like to call upon Mr. Austin Carwood to offer the eulogy. Good morning. Born on October 11, 1934, in St. Thomas to Agnes Benjamin and Amos Shinnery, Rudo was the second of six children born to Agnes and the second of two sons born to Amos. He grew up with his mother's side, the Benjamin side of the family, after his mother's passing at the age of 17. He worked with his uncles and cousins in the state hope training horses and later worked as a steward for the VI Housing Horses Horse Racing Association. He attended Charlotte Marty High School where he excelled in electronics and was an avid baseball player. After graduating in 1955, Rudell realized his dream of joining the U.S. Air Force. He served for 20 years, achieving the rank of Tech Sergeant, E6. After retiring from the military, Rudell returned home and worked at Vitelco, formerly Innovative and now VIA, the Virgin Islands Housing Authority, the Department of Conservation and Cultural Affairs, now the Department of Planning and Natural Resources, as Deputy Commissioner, and the VI Legislature, where he served as a legislative aide from 1979 to 1997. And it's where he horned his political acumen. Rudel Alonzo Shinnery Sr. Shino, as we affectionately, as he is affectionately known by me and my family, and Rudy, or Gummy, to others, was typically a man of few words. He didn't waste a lot of time on gossip, melee, or fruitless chatter. But don't mistake his calm demeanor, soft-spoken voice for weakness or lack of interest. If you wanted to engage in any of his three known passions, baseball, politics, or physical fitness, it was game on. His keen perception, quick wit, and dry humor could cut deep 
as easily as it healed. After he retired from the, legis the legislature in the Virgin Islands, <clears throat> where he spent 18 years, and worked for learned, such learned uh, and luminaries as Senator Alan Paul Shatkin, Verdon Brown, and cherished friend and mentor Lorraine Berry, he would spend mornings drinking coffee and talking politics with other political junkies. His favorite haunts included Gourmet Gallery in Crown Bay, Roy Lester Schneider Hospital Cafeteria, the Kmart Cafeteria in Tutu Park Mall, and, uh, and the old coffee shop uh, in the, the, uh, oh, the coffee shop in the old Sebastian building, to name a few. Any place where the coffee was hot, the discussions could get heated. Shinner was sought out by novice and seasoned politicians alike for his understanding of the local political landscape and players. Rudy was a baseball wonder kid from his early school days where he played for several local senior baseball teams. When he joined the U.S. Air Force, he was a star player for the Air Force team at Chirurgian Air Force Base in Madrid, Spain, and traveled all over Southern Europe. During that tour, he was selected as Airman of the Quarter and Airman of the Year. Those are prestigious awards in the, in the Air Force. An honor that reflected his above and beyond contributions to that air base community. Rudy loved his time in the service in Madrid and in the Air Force, so much so that he requested an extension of that tour of duty, which was subsequently, subsequently denied and resulted in his decision to retire. He was also stationed in Ramey Air Force Base in Puerto Rico, Offutt Air Force Base in Nebraska, and Langley Air Force Base in Virginia. His two favorite assignments were being flown to Thailand to provide technical support to in-country units during the Vietnam era, often being the only passenger on flights to that uh, destination. And the other was playing for the US Air Force traveling team from Trajan uh, Air Force Base. Rudy was also a shy boy, as we would call it, a classy and very particular dresser. He never left the house, even if it was in jeans and a t-shirt, without his pants being creased and pressed, and his shirt starched. And in short sleeves, his guns and cross were always evident. Rudy was also particular about what he ate. His mother's profession as a cook contributed to that. He couldn't cook, though. And you could tell, even well into his 80s, that he treated his body as a temple. He maintained a lean, muscular physique, the result of an exact and demanding weight training regimen, and always carried himself with a tall, knowing gait. General traveled. And I, by that we mean got out of the house. Uh, whether it was to get his daily coffee, go to the VA hospital in Puerto Rico for medical appointments, or to Arizona play, coach, or watch the VI 50 plus baseball team. You didn't have to ask him twice or pitch a destination. He was always ready to go. Shino and Charlene could be seen daily about the town running errands. Their devotion to each other was touching and evident. Rudell cherished his family and community. He was a proud member of the, of the Shalomali High School class of 1955. Now you probably noticed that the, the year of 55 coming up uh, a couple times. It's not only the year of my birth, but it was also the year, the first year of the class that the classes or high school being shifted to Shalamaya. They did one half uh, at the legislature and then they moved the school to uh, Shalamaya. So it was the first graduating class of Shalamaya as well. He also worked to improve his scot-free uh, neighborhood where he lived. 
and he loved to listen to uh, Spanish or Latin music. After a brief illness, Rudy passed away peacefully on the evening of Saturday, March 23rd, 2024, at the Schneider Regional Medical Center, on his own terms and only as he would have it, quietly and without fanfare. He was 89. May he rest in eternal peace. Thank you, Austin.
Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to this time of worship. Welcome to Memorial. As we have come today to lay our brother to rest, I pray that our time together will truly be a blessing and an inspiration to all of us. So I say welcome to family and friends who are here as we say our final goodbye to our brother Rudel. It is my prayer that when we leave this place, we'll all truly say it was good that we had come. So welcome family, welcome friends and loved ones. Allow me to say to our sister, Deborah Henneman Smith, who was leading in the tributes. She's one of our acolytes here at Memorial, and she's always here. And I'm always so thankful that whenever she comes, she is always so willing and ready to participate and share in our worship. So I, I just want to acknowledge her this morning in a very special way. She will continue to lead our worship today. And before uh, we begin, allow me to also say that during this time of worship, we will be taking an offering today. And if you see the two baskets up front at the appropriate time, I will invite you to leave from your seats and to come and place an offering in these baskets, either one of them for the continued work of our church here at Memorial. May I now invite you to stand as we sing our opening hymn, O oh Master, let me walk with you.
please remain standing. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be praised in his great mercy by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. He gave us new birth into a living hope, the hope of an inheritance reserved in heaven which nothing can destroy or spoil or wither. As a father has compassion for his children, so the Lord has compassion for those who fear him. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, says the Lord. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. He would not have you ignorant brothers and sisters about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. Blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted. I am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor power or heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, you love us with an everlasting love and can turn the shadows of death into the light of a new dawn. Help us now to wait upon you with reverence and submissive hearts. In the silence of this hour, speak to us of eternal things. With patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life, which you have given us in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. At, th at this time, we're going to ask for the Son our brother Shinari to come forward, and he will read for us from the Old Testament, Psalm 46, verses 1 to 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth be removed, and through the mountains be carried into the mist of the sea. Through the waters thereof roar and be troubled. Though mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There's a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and right early. The heathen rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered her voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations hath he made on the earth? He maketh wars to cease the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, he cutteth the spear in sonder. 
he burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, and I know that I am of God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I shall be exalted in the earth. The Lord is the host, is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge, Selah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Mr. God. I'd like to ask us to please stand as we raise our voices in the singing of the hymn. Precious Lord, take my hand. We're going to call on Janine Francis Brown to do the second scripture reading, which will be taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 to 10. Good morning. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built from, by human hands. 
Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead of our heavenly dwelling, because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened, because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due for us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. This is the word of the Lord. We continue this worship service with the singing of the hymn, How Great Thou Art. And I'd like to ask you to stand again, please.
We now welcome the Reverend Dr. Courtright Jarvis to deliver the meditation for today. Thank you very much, Sister. It's the Demi. Let us pray. My Lord and my God, we're here today, O oh God, because one of our soldiers have fallen. God, you have been good to us. You were good to him. And despite whatever ailments he had, God, you were good. You were gracious. You were kind. And he gave you thanks and praise for your goodness towards him. We have come, O oh God, to say goodbye to our brother. Goodbye to a friend, goodbye to a colleague, goodbye to a husband, a father, a son. But as we come, oh God, we are mindful that we must continue to run this race. Help us to run this race so that at the end of our journey, we will not run in vain. So bless every single person in this place today and help us, God, to live in such a way that, Lord, others will be blessed because of the lives that we live. Have your divine way, therefore, in this place today and guide our steps into the way of peace. Bless your word, therefore, to our hearts and may your name and your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Death is a funny thing. It doesn't tell us when it is coming. And while each of us must expect it at some point in time, I wish that death will tell us exactly when it is coming. So that we get ourselves ready and prepared. But you know, because it, it doesn't tell us when it is coming, it is important for us to always be in a state of preparedness. Rudel was in the military. If I don't know anything else about the military, this one thing I know is that you have to be prepared at all times. No one has to say that to me. You have to be prepared. No matter which area of the military you're in, you have to be prepared for any eventuality. Because things could happen in the twinkling of an eye. Death too could happen in the twinkling of an eye. I you probably saw me over there sitting. I was trying to scan through this entire book in a couple of minutes. A few things grabbed my attention. One thing I want to, to lift here at this point. The words, until we meet again. You only use these words at a time of death to say to somebody who was good, who was gracious, who was kind, who was loving, 
who has forgiven. If the person didn't mean anything to you, if the person was not loving and caring and understanding, why would you want to see until we meet again? You'd rather say good riddance to bad rubbish. But when you say until we meet again, it means that this person meant a lot to you. And you wish that life could have continued with the one who has gone on. These are the words, these are the words that Charlene has written in this booklet. And I, I must tell you, Charlene, I, I read through every single word you have here. And I really love what you have written. And in the last sentence, in fact, the second to last sentence, you said, until we meet again. I sat and I listened to Charlene and her sister as we prepared for this funeral service. And I felt the depth of love that Charlene had for this man called Rudel and the depth of love that he had for her. Charlene said to me that wherever Rudel was going, she was there. And wherever she was going, he was there. Coming to the end of, towards the end of his life, or some point in time, he lost his sight. And he was in a wheelchair at some point in time. And she said, as we sat there, that person's ox, you know, why is it that you take Rudel with you everywhere you're going, traveling up and down the place, despite his situation? And she said, she always said, it is my responsibility to take care of this man that God has blessed me with. And so no matter what happened, she took him, she journeyed with him. She did not want to leave that responsibility for anybody else. It was her responsibility. And she took it seriously. And so she says here, until we meet again. Rudel passed. He was almost 90. In fact, October would have made him 90. This coming October would have made him 90. He lived a full life. And for those of us who are here this morning, it is not how you begin the journey, but how you end it. How you end the journey. And I beg of us, all of us, try to end your journey well. As you go along in life, do all that you can to be a blessing to somebody. Because you see, there are some people who are so, so selfish that they're only concerned about themselves. Me, myself, and I. But we need to live so that others would be blessed, encouraged, and strengthened. Listen to Charlene. She says here, Rudel's love knew no bounds. What a thing to say of anybody. His love knew no bounds. He would touch a life. 
of all those with whom he came in contact. She experienced love in all of its dimension. And I wish, I wish somebody would say that of me, that my love knows no bounds. That no matter who you are, no matter what stage in life you are, no matter what others say about you, that you would still continue to do that which is right and good and honest and upright in the sight of God all the time. His love knew no bounds. And this is what we can say about Jesus Christ, that his love knew no bounds. Because no matter who we are, no matter where we have been, no matter the situation that we would have found ourselves in, you know what the scripture says? God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. No matter who we are, No matter who we are, his love knew no bounds. Permit me to continue to quote Charlene, because I, 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 I find this, this so, so important. He was a partner in every sense of the word. He brought laughter to my days and joy to my heart. Enriching my life in ways words cannot express. Wow. Powerful words. He was my rock, my refuge, and my greatest blessing. He was my rock, my fortress, and my greatest blessing. My, my brothers and sisters this morning, as we reflect upon the life of Mr. Rudin, I do pray truly that for family, for friends, for loved ones, for colleagues whom he worked with, I believe Charlene is echoing what you yourself would have said about Rudin my rock, my fortress, and my greatest blessing. You see me? I want to live in such a way that others will be blessed. Because I know, I know as the scripture says, I came into this world with nothing. And it is certain that I will go out with nothing. That's what the scripture says. And so, whatever God has blessed me with, and whatever God has blessed you with, just know, all good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, or thank the Lord for all his love. And so I ask, what do you have in your hands? Who placed it there? How did you get it? Did it just fall from somewhere? And so your hands are full? It is all because of God. Never forget this. There are too many, too many persons who believe that they woke themselves up this morning. Not so. That you gave yourself health and strength and life. Not so. Can I, can I, can I be honest or even more honest with us this morning? 
we are here only because of the mercies of God. Not because of anything else. Not because of anything else. We are here because of the mercies. Despite our faults, our imperfections, despite our sins, Christ died so that you might live, so that I might live, so that we might live. Let us therefore seek to live for God every day. And you know, you know, one of the things for me is that whenever we do, whenever we do something good unto somebody, we're doing it unto God. Believe me. So you might not see God's face to face, and you might not be able to reach out to God and touch him like I am touching Sister Debbie now. You might not be able to do that. I might not be able to do that. But you see, by the way we live, people will see Jesus. People will see his love in us. You might be wondering this morning, well, what is pastor talking about? You see, when I come to a funeral, it doesn't matter whose funeral, I speak to the living, not to the dead. The dead is or was an example to us. But if Rudel's life meant anything to us then, from his example, we should live better lives. Better lives. So when you, when you go back home today, wherever you live, tell your neighbor good afternoon. The neighbor whom you haven't spoken to for years. Tell them good afternoon. Life is good. Tell your colleague when you go back to work, boy, it is so good to be alive. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Tell your spouse, darling, I love you so much. Believe me, there are some people who don't tell their spouse anything at all. I remember recently I was sharing that one wife was so surprised when her husband told her one day he loved her. She said, what happened to you? <laughs> because she never heard those words. And they have been together for so long. So she felt something went wrong with him. That is something that should come from us naturally. Talk about it. Don't tell me that you know that I love you. I must show it. I must live it. And you must see it in my life. And this is how life ought to be. Look, if you know, as I came in the office this morning, I was saying to the secretary, Lord of mercy, you know the amount of people I have buried for this year already? And we're just at the beginning of April. Almost every other week I have a funeral here. I had, had one last week. Two weeks before that, I had another one. And it just, it's just like this. Let us redeem the time. And let us make the best of every opportunity that we get to be a blessing and an inspiration. Do not take your life for granted. And do not think that because you are here today that you will always be here. Make the best of life and make other people 
happy. On Friday night last, I felt so lifted, so encouraged, so blessed, so strengthened. I spent 12 years in Trinidad and Tobago as a pastor. And in Tobago, where I spent most of these 12 years, there were some young people that I saw while I was there just growing up. Some had just entered high school. I left Tobago at the end of 1994. Long time. That's when I left. But we still have a connection. And all those young people, I was so happy they called me right here in St. Thomas just Friday night. And they said to me, thank you. They gathered together. All of them are adults now. But they gathered together and they said, thank you for molding us, for inspiring us. We are still here, we are still together, and we are still worshiping God. And I felt so blessed, so encouraged, so strengthened. And if you give me an opportunity at the cemetery, I will show you some of the photographs they sent. Because some of them had been away before 1994 and got the first opportunity to get back to Tobago. They were there last week and they all gathered and they were just having a, a wonderful time, basking in each other's presence. And I said to them, because each one of them spoke to me individually, one call, but there were about 15, 15 or 18 of them there. And every one of them spoke to me individually. And I said to them, life is meant to be lived. Live it to the glory of God. Be there for one another. There are too many persons when, when things get good with them, they forget everybody else who helped them. They, forgot, they forget everybody else who inspired them. They forgot everybody else who was there for them when they were down and out. Never forget where you came from. Never forget those who stood with you. Never forget those who prayed with you. Never forget those who encouraged you. Never forget those who stood with you in good times and in bad times. So as Charlene says in her write-up here in this booklet, until we meet again. When you say this, it means that the person inspired you, that the person blessed you, that the person literally helped you in your own situation. And now today you're saying, God, you are so good. A wonderful God. Until we meet again. I pray that today for each of us, let us live as if it were the last. Make the best of it. Make the best of life. Say thank you to somebody. I love you. I love you. I love you and really mean it. May God bless you, my brothers 
and sisters. And when you leave from this place, maybe you might not remember anything at all that this pastor has said. But if there's one thing, I, I, I beg of you, live your life in such a way that somebody would be blessed and encouraged. And somebody would be able to say to you at the end of your journey, until we meet again. Amen. Father and our God, we, we just thank you. And we praise you. And we celebrate your faithfulness. We thank you for Rudel and for the life that he lived and for the many persons whom you would have blessed and touched and encouraged. Help us, O oh God, to live good, to walk good, so that somebody would say of us, Lord, I thank you for placing this person in my life, on my journey. Give me strength, so stand by me, Lord. Have your divine way now, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Pastor Jarvis, and thank you, Charlene. Until we meet again, we continue this worship service with the prayers of the people. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, hear us. By your human birth, by your obedience and faithfulness, by your prayers and tears, by your agony and passion, by your dying words, by your reconciling death, by your rest in the grave, by your triumphant resurrection, by your abiding presence. Bless and comfort us, O Lord. I ask us to stand and I know since COVID, we haven't been holding hands, but if you feel comfortable to hold hands with the person next to you, we will all sing the Our Father. Our Father. holy and merciful God, the refuge and strength of those who put their trust in you. We thank you for the multitude no one can number, whom you have received into your eternal joy. We praise you that you have forgiven them all their sins and that they dwell with you. Beyond evil and sorrow, 
forever. We thank you also for all to whom amid the trials of this mortal life, you give the fate to overcome the world, who have peace in you and rejoice in the hope of your glory. To Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal God, before whose face the generations rise and pass away, and bless and praise your name for all who have departed this life in faith, especially our brother Rudel of Alonzo Shinnery. For all your kindness to him throughout his earthly life, we give you thanks. We thank you that for him all sickness and sorrow are ended, and that debt itself has passed away. Almighty God, we be inspired by the example of your saints. Run with the patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, so that when this mortal life is ended, we may be gathered with those whom we have loved in the kingdom of your glory, where there is no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Father of mercies and God of our comfort, you make nothing in vain and love all that you have made. Look in tender mercy on your people in their loss. Enable them to find in you their refuge and their strength, a very present help in trouble. Sustain them and deliver them from bitterness, despair, and doubt of your love. Comfort them in their sadness. Uphold them with your strong love. Help them to face the future without fear, knowing that they and all whom they love are in your hands and that nothing in life not even death itself can separate any one of us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God our Father, by whom we are led through the changes of time to the rest and blessedness of eternity, be near us to comfort and uphold. Make us to know that your people are precious in your sight and that they live evermore with you as we thank you for Rudel, whose life we shared, may we trust you at this time of parting. O oh God, give us of your strength that we may take up our lives more bravely and seek to be more faithful in duty and more loving and helpful to others, following those who are no longer with us here on earth. And may we, in our turn, Find in your great mercy the perfect and unending rest of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll stand at this point and sing the hymn, Amazing Grace, but rather we'll sit. And at this time, we'll ask for you to come forward with your offerings as we sing the closing hymn, Amazing Grace.
Amen. Amen. Let us pray as we ask God's blessings on these gifts, Father. We are so thankful for the gifts of your people who have brought them this morning, placed them in the baskets to be used, O oh God, to your honor and to your glory so that someone might be blessed and someone might come to see their way and will come to know you, whom to know is life eternal. So bless the hands from which they came. And God, we commit them into your hands even now. I pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let us commend our brother Rudel to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Heavenly Father, by your power you gave us life. And in your love you have given us new life in Jesus Christ. We entrust Rudel to your merciful keeping in the faith of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who died and rose again, that we might enjoy eternal life. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. recessional hymn, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. At the end of this song, now we are journeying out to the Eastern Cemetery. Take your time on the road, please. We don't want to have any accidents or incidents. So we sing together, my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Sounded for the trumpet that never 